Um, I don't know how much you've been introduced to Puerto Rican art history. I mean, I will say that in, in, in some ways it's, it's definitely been an unrecorded in, in terms of bibliographies, but artists um, have created uh, a great image bank of our visual history, and it's only been in the, in more recently. Actually, the first complete textbook that you can buy, but I would encourage you if you want to continue to uh, incorporate Puerto Rican images in your coursework is Puerto Rico Alte y Identidad. That was published in uh, 1998. It's a hardcover textbook that is in both Spanish and English. Excellent source by the top art historians in Puerto Rico. And I think that you read Susana Laval's essay is within that, that textbook. It's, it's expensive, but it's, I think it's well worth um, investing in, especially it, in your schools, since it is bilingual. I'm showing you the, uh, the Taino ballpark in Utuado, Puerto Rico. And the Tainos were the native people of the Caribbean. They were not just located in Puerto Rico, but in uh, Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Santo Domingo. Um, and I don't know if you have ever incorporated their history when you talk about the history of, in pre-Columbian history, but they were, they were a nation just like the Aztecs, the Incas, and the Mayans. So I would, I would proffer that um, when you, when and if you do cover art before Columbus, art of the Americas, that you think about including the Tainos. One of the most important things about this ballpark is that it is a ballpark, and you'll see similar types of ballparks throughout the Americas. That's how we know that there was a connection between the Aztec and the Mayan people and the Caribbean people. They weren't part of the same nation. They had a different cosmology. However, the existence of these ballparks make that connection between the Caribbean nations and Central and South America. So that's one of the ways in which you can expand this and compare it to, say, an Aztec or a, or a Mayan ballpark that you would see in Guatemala or you would see in, in Mexico and talk about how, you know, what are the comparisons and contrasts between these nations. I want to point in particular to an image that you will see often here in New York. Um, in Puerto Rico, and this is the goddess of, crea of, of, of the waters and fertility, Atabex. Um, Puerto Ricans, both in Puerto Rico and here, she, even though we don't, we don't have like rituals, official rituals um, of the native people, there is a great deal of um, remembrance of the Taino Indians, and particularly in the 1960s, when these ballparks were really um, redone, and a lot of investment was put into them, and a lot of his historical records began to be published about the Tainos, even though they were always known in Puerto Rico. But in the 1950s and onwards, there's been a real desire among archaeologists to look closely at these ballparks. And as a result, there's been a resurgence of Taino imagery, especially here in, in among the New Yorican movement, to recover that part of the Puerto Rican heritage that was basically underground. Because another important, uh, these these are petroglyphs, and then another kind of artifact that that, that the Tainos had were semis that were put under under underneath the ground to to you know for, as like amulets to protect the land and make it fertile. So um, any questions a little bit about how you might want to discuss this, this culture? Or do you think you, there might be a place for this culture within the curriculum? Yeah. 